All right. Good morning or good day, whatever time of day it might be. So my name is Ms. Kathleen Allen and uh, I teach the subject food, nutrition and health. And uh, we've been so far looking at the unit consumerism and purchasing. Um, we would have dealt with labeling. We would have dealt with the rights and responsibilities of a consumer. So today we're going to continue along the same line. What is before me at this point in time? We're seeing here a whole list of different food, things that we are foods that we are accustomed eating. So let's guess which food group each picture belongs to. So we see picture A. I'm not going to say what the food items are. I want you to be able to look, visualize, and classify each food into a food group. B, C, all right? That's a very seasonal food item. D, E, F, G, and H. So, Make sure, write down what food group do you think that each one of these are going to belong to. So let's look at the other list of pictures. I, what food group does I belong to? J, K, L, M, N, O, P, and Q. So I know your brain is chilling at this point in time because you're seeing pictures and some of them may be a little unfamiliar and some of them may be familiar to you. So one of the initial things that we would have learned in uh, this subject is nutri nutrients and food groups. So now that you have listed which food group that you think that each item is in, let's see if we're on the same path together. So your pre-knowledge would have been tested. So the first one, A, would have been fruits and vegetables. That's the food group it's classified in. B, animal products. C, fats and oils. D, animal products. E, fruits and vegetables. F, cereals and grains. G, fruits and vegetables and H, fats and oils. Let's move to our next slide. I, fats and oils. J, fruits and vegetables. K, fats and oils. L, vegetables, which fall on the legumes. M, vegetables, legumes. N, staples and grains. O, vegetables and legumes. P, staples and grains, and Q, vegetables and legumes. I'll mention what M is because M is pistachio nuts because sometimes some people may not be familiar with that. The N is actually also rice um, cakes, and K is your vinaigrettes, all right? These would be some of the pictures that might have been a little bit um, unknown to you, all right? So... When we think about these food groups, we want to think about for us, us as consumers, purchasing, classification, selection, and storage of foods. That is our topic today. When we are thinking about ourselves as consumers, we know that we purchase food. But in order to purchase what we need, we must be able to classify it, we must be able to select it, and we must be able to store foods properly. So, the first thing that we must understand is our food groups. And we can see here listed something called the food pyramid. Now, the food pyramid, as you know, consists of several things, all types of foods. And it is grouped into foods that have similar characteristics. So your bread, cereals, rice, and pasta usually come under what we call the staples group. Fruits and vegetables, fruits are foods with seeds, vegetables are foods without seeds. So your animal products range from milk, yogurt, and cheese, so all your milk products, and your meat, poultry, fish, all right? Now, dry beans sometimes go under this, um, and go under vegetables, because vegetables and um, dry beans are basically fall on the same thing. So you will see, um, as you do research, there are differences in each food pyramid. 
So we have the new modernized food permit, which talks about not just having foods at the bottom, going all the way to the top. The one for food, nutrition, and health that we use is the one that you previously saw. But it's also important for us to know new things. So the new food pyramid looks like this. And moderation is important. So it is not about how um, much servings you eat, but moderation in each basic food group. So food classification. How do we classify foods in food groups? And let's think about it. So the position at the bottom of the food pyramid that we saw is designated to staples, cereals, or grains. And you are supposed to serve six to 11 servings per day. Six, obviously, would be for the person that does not utilize as much energy. 11, you're talking about your laborers, people who need a lot of energy to work on a daily basis. Then you have the middle section. You have fruits, which is two to four servings a day. And you try to minimize the amount of servings of fruit in terms of it's not as big as your staples because fruits are already rich in a lot of fructose, which is a sugar. Then you have in the middle already, vegetables, legumes, pulses, and nuts. This is three to five servings, all right? That's why mommy and daddy would sometimes say, eat your veggies, all right? Veggies are very good for you. In the middle position, we also have animal products, two to three servings. Now, in the Caribbean culture, most of us, we consume heavy animal products and heavy staples. But we see here that our animal products, all we're supposed to eat per day is two to three servings of uh, our animal products. And to the top, we have fats and oils. And that means that we have to eat that sparingly. So let's go into food storage. How do we store food? So when you think about your staples and how they are stored, we have to think about all the various types of staples that we have. So we have grains, we have cereals, we have flour, we have pasta. And we have uh, some of these things are uh, in a dried consistency. And then we have things that actually you make products from, like your bread and your buns. So for your baked goods, you must put them in airtight bags. That's why we seal them if you're, making, you're buying bread, all right? And then you refrigerate so that you can increase the shelf life. Dried cereals, airtight containers. That is why if you leave flour open, it starts to clump together, all right? Away from pests and in a cool, dry location. Because remember, most of these things are dehydrated, meaning water has been removed. So if they are exposed to water, what will happen? They will start to basically decompose over time. Processed cereals, just like the cereals that we feed babies, like Nestum. So you have your rice cereal, you have your oats. Once open, you should place in your refrigerator. Fruits and vegetables. Do not pull apart your fruits and vegetables. So if I have a pineapple, I should not discard the head from the body of the pineapple. Same thing with a carrot. So do not pull apart your fruits and your vegetables. Do not place in airtight bags. What this does is that it increases the decay in the fruit or the vegetable. Keep root vegetables in a cool, dark, dry place. So not always the place for these uh, root vegetables like um, potatoes and so forth, they're supposed to be in the refrigerator. You can't put them in a refrigerator, but they will stay well in a cool, dark, dry plate. We have processed foods, fruits and vegetables that we buy in cans, we buy in packs, sometimes they're frozen. So you need to place in a cool, dry area if unopened and an airtight packaging in the refrigerator when open. So you open your canned, Pineapple, you should refrigerate or even freeze. How animal products are stored. All right, place pieces of meat in airtight packaging and freezing for freezing because you want to prevent blisters, you want to prevent um, the proliferation of bacteria, which means growth of bacteria because bacteria is attracted to blood and most raw meat has blood in it. Processed meat. Now we're talking sausage, ham, bacon, 
these things, keeping its original packaging in the refrigerator. All right. That is why when you take them out of the package, it tends to spoil quickly. There's a reason why these, these packages are put in place. It must freeze or slip in our, what we call a resealable freezer bag. A resealable freezer bag will prevent air from continually entering into the packaging. And for things like milk and cheese and yogurt, right? These kinds of products you have to chill. We have a certain compartment in the fridge that we usually put them in. How to store your legumes, pulses, and nuts. We're using this separate, even though it's part of vegetables, because it's important for us to know these things. Now, most of our beans or legumes, right, they come to us actually dry. So store beans in a food safe storage container with tight fitting lids. So I've seen some people store beans in the refrigerator because they were trying to get rid of weevils. But once you put it in a tight lid container, all should be well. Keep your nuts and seeds in airtight containers away from direct sunlight and strong flavored foods. This is because nuts usually oxidize, so they brown with um, sunlight and air exposure, and they become soft. Also, it absorbs flavor very readily, so you have to be careful of the types of foods that you put it next to, similar to that of eggs. How to store fats and oils? Store fats and oils in their original containers if it is glass or plastic, all right? Most likely, manufacturers would have made sure that their packaging is what we call inert. Inert means that it is not reactive to the packaging, all right? So you might go and throw this fat or this oil in some container that you have, and that container may react with the fat and oil. So keep it in its original content. Butter spreads can be stored in the fridge, the freezer, or covered on the counter in properly sealed wrappings. And most of the wrappings for um, these foods tend to have some sort of aluminum foil because light reacts with butter spreads. That is why if you leave your butter out and you have it exposed to the light, when it refreezes, it changes color. It oxidizes because your free radicals in the oil would have been exposed. So we've learned how to store basically, but there are three food storage areas that we must be mindful of. So storing food in a fridge or in a dry storage area forms part of the food safety pillars. So you have to know where you store your food groups, all right? So what does that simply mean? It means it is a fundamental area in the kitchen that can help prevent contamination from happening. So your food storage areas, we have our refrigerator. That basically acts as a form of preservation, all right? Your freezer also, all right, lengthens the shelf life of your food products. And you have your pantry, or sometimes we use our cupboards to be able to store our foods. And this is where you will put your jars and your bottles, and this will be your dry cool area that is free from pestilence that you can store your food in. So well, let's talk about the refrigerator. The refrigerator is very important. How do you load your fridge? Now, in terms of your fridge, you usually put your meat in your chillers, your butter and your cheese in your dairy compartment. Now, your dairy compartment is not always located on the door. Sometimes it is located in the first, underneath the first shelf in your refrigerator. And it's usually a drawer that you can pull out. All right. We have the fruit and vegetable crisper. Some refrigerators have the crisper below. And they usually come in either one long compartment or two drawers where you can separate your fruits from your vegetables. You have your frozen goods usually in the freezers. So some refrigerators have their freezer below and some have it to the top, all right? So wherever your freezer is located is where your meat, your fish, all these animal products should be, all right? And then you have your milk and your probably sometimes your ketchup, your mustard, your green seasoning. Usually they are also on the door. 
And we usually have a compartment now for your eggs. So let's think about it again, organizing your refrigerator. So it's showing you that different refrigerators have different compartments. All compartments are the same, but they are positioned differently. So we're looking here, your upper shelf, foods that don't need cooking, all right? Lower middle shelf, usually a dairy product. Your bottom shelf, wrapped raw meat and fish, your drawers, your veggies, salad and fruit. So your foods that have already been processed, you've already cooked them, you have your yogurt, you have things that you put in your refrigerator that just need chilling. Those are the things that should be to the top because there is no need for any cross-contamination. Your lower middle shelf, all your dairy products because they have similar properties. Your bottom shelf for your meat and your raw fish because of the fact that that's where you tore out food and you don't want any drippings from those items dropping into your food. And your crisper is where you put all your drawers, is where you put all your fruits and your vegetables away from the direct blast of the refrigerator. And your door shelves store foods that have natural preservatives in it. So your freezer, guidelines for using the freezer. Now the freezer is organized with shelves that move. All right, sometimes some of us, we don't really actually move them but they are there so that you can sort through your refrigerator, your freezer. Most of us ramp-pack our freezer. Your freezer is supposed to operate at a specific capacity. You're supposed to keep foods in airtight packages in the freezer to prevent freezer burn. Because at some point in time, you will utilize the food and the food will be able to tore out properly. You're supposed to actually quick freeze food to prevent ice particles from damaging your food product. Label your frozen food with the date and name of the food. Many of us are guilty of not doing that. There is something first in, first out. That is a business principle and we utilize that with food. What basically you put in first should be the first things that you utilize. So because I went to the grocery today, and I got this new bunch of uh, um, eggs. I should use the older eggs first before I use the new eggs. And separate foods into portion size for easy reheating. So when you freeze your meat, you should season it and you should portion it according to how your family eats, right? So that you will not have to be towing out and exposing your food to basically um, bacteria and you getting food poisoning. So let's do this. What do you remember about our lesson today? So we're gonna do a little activity. It should be exciting and it's called fill the fridge. Now you see a refrigerator here, all right? A basic refrigerator. We are going to go with what this refrigerator does. So we have the top shelf of the refrigerator. You have your middle shelf, all right? So please pay attention to where the arrows are located. Your bottom shelf. You have your bottom drawers, which we know to be our crisper. And we have the door, any part of the door. So our activity is actually going to ask you to fill the fridge and figure out whether the food is supposed to be on the top shelf, middle shelf, bottom shelf, bottom drawers, or on the door. On your marks, get set, go. So we have raw chicken. Which shelf should this be stored? Is it the top shelf, the middle shelf, bottom shelf, bottom drawers, or on the door? I'll give you a minute to just write it down quickly. Test your knowledge, all right? It's important for us to test what we remember so that we can see that learning has taken place. Cooked roast beef. So we have our options from top shelf to on the door. Which shelf should this be stored? Cooked roast beef. Which shelf should this be stored? Salad. Top shelf, middle shelf, bottom shelf, bottom drawers, or on the door. Which shelf should this be stored? So nice salad. Milk, 
which shelf should this be stored? All right, whether it be almond milk, cashew milk, goat milk, cow's milk, soy milk, which shelf should it be stored on? Trifle. For those of us who don't know what trifle is, that is a gelatin-based dish like jello. So you have condensed milk, you have um, jello, you have fruit, all right? And uh, where should you store this type of dish? On your top shelf, middle shelf, bottom shelf, bottom drawers, or on the door? Raw fish. Which part of the refrigerator should this be stored? Raw fish? Should it be stored on the door? Or is it the bottom shelf? Or is it the top shelf? Where? Salami. All right? So salami, some people say salami, some people say sausage. There's a difference, but we'll utilize it so that you'd be able to know what type of food I'm talking about. So your top shelf, your middle shelf, your bottom shelf, or your bottom drawer or on the door, which shelf should this be stored on? Cheese, Parmesan cheese, cheddar cheese, mozzarella cheese. Which shelf should this be stored on? Eggs, are eggs stored on your top shelf? Or probably is it your bottom shelf? Which shelf should this be stored on? Take a careful look at the refrigerator and make a wise decision. Raw lamb shoulder. I love lamb. So, therefore, I would store it properly. And I wonder where do you think I would store my lamb? Whether it be the top shelf, the bottom shelf, or on the door. You tell me, where would you store the raw lamb shoulder? Yogurt. All kiddies like yogurt. So where would you store your um, children's yogurt? All right? Top shelf or on the door? All right? Probably it's the bottom drawer. Who knows? I look forward to knowing soon. So you have here the answers. So for your top shelf, you, use, you have your trifle and your yogurt. And why is this? Because these are foods that are already processed. They're already cooked, all right? These foods go to your top shelf, right? You have your middle shelf, your cooked beef, your salami. These are also cooked items. So you always have all your cooked or your processed foods to the top, all right? Bottom shelf your raw chicken, your lamb shoulder, raw fish. Remember we said that you want no drippings falling onto the food items. So imagine if you had put that on top of the trifle or the yogurt, the foods would have what we call cross-contamination. Bottom shelf, you have your salad. Then your fridge door, we have milk, cheese, and eggs. All right? So... If there was the option for you to have the drawer that is underneath the first shelf, the cheese could also go there. But we were dealing with the specific options that carried. So I want you to remember that each refrigerator is different, but based on the options that CSEC provides for you is how you are supposed to consider your answer. All right? How much did you get correct? I hope that you got all correct. So thus ends our lesson for today. Remember that foods are classified according to their food groups. So we have staples, we have fruits, we have vegetables, and legumes, pulses, and beans come under your vegetables. We have animal products, which are divided into your milk and milk products, and then your meat, fish, right, and shell foods. And we have fats and oils. Also, after we have classified our foods, we need to learn how to select them properly. What are we looking for? All right? Make sure your foods have the different purposes and you are then going to store them in the appropriate areas. Most of them store in dry, cool areas, especially if they're dehydrated. Some are stored in the refrigerator. Decide whether you need to put things in the refrigerator, in the pantry, or the freezer. 
So I hope that you would have learned a lot today, all right, and be able to be a good consumer, not just knowing your rights and responsibilities, but now you know how to go about purchasing, selecting, classifying, and storing your food. Do have a good day.